Thank you, uh, Ms. Miller. I'd uh, like to thank Ranking Member Brady and uh, Mr. Buchanan uh, for holding this uh, roundtable. What I think is a really important discussion, you know, I've certainly seen the impact of this terrible disease on uh, constituents all across my district, and I've seen the impact not only on them and on their families. Um, and so I, along with some of my other colleagues here, uh, were members of the uh, the Bipartisan Congressional Task Force on Alzheimer's Disease. And, you know, I've always been a strong supporter of uh, research uh, to develop uh, treatments and cures uh, for some of these very, very difficult diseases. Again, because it's the right thing to do, I believe. I think most of the taxpayers um, uh, understand the, the, the impact on people's lives and their quality of lives if we can uh, get to the point of of uh, curing some of these diseases. So it's a it's a, you know it's it's an important thing that I think we we should be continuing to do, uh, and it's also financially uh, a vital investment uh, in our country's future. And I think uh, one of the witnesses, and I appreciate all of you being here, mentioned this earlier. You know, currently we're spending about three hundred and fifty five billion a year caring for patients with Alzheimer's disease with no cure available. And that number uh, is growing uh, each year. And in fact, it's projected that by 2050, um, you know, absent any significant innovations in treatments or in finding a cure, uh, we, we'll, our children actually will be, will be spending over a trillion a year uh, fighting this uh, brutal disease. And so I think a lot's been said here already. I don't know that I have a whole lot additional to add, except to say that you know we should put policies in place uh, that not only uh, directly invest, but also ensure that the market um, is incentivized uh, to, uh, to develop these therapies that can make a difference in people's lives. And uh, that's why I think the CMS action in this is uh, so misguided. Uh, because of the impact that it's going to have on people's lives. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it will disproportionately affect, um, for example, rural patients, lower income patients, minority patients uh, who are less likely to access uh, clinical trials, uh, meaning their access to potentially life-saving Alzheimer's medicines will be cut off as well. Um, and so, again, We've talked about this. Uh, I think it's a, it's a bad decision uh, on the part of uh, CMS. And so maybe just one uh, one additional question just to highlight the impact. And maybe I'll ask this of Mr. Schultes. I think I pronounced that correctly, hopefully. Um, you know, we're, we're all hoping for um, ultimately to find a cure for Alzheimer's. And in the meantime, new therapies that can help uh, to improve the lives of the families and the patients who have the disease. Um, what do you think the impact is of this decision? If this, if this goes into effect, will we ever find a cure for Alzheimer's? Uh, thank you, Representative Fucker, for the question. I, one of the problems we've seen, and there's a general belief, I think, among certain of your colleagues, that you can reduce the amount of reimbursement I don't want to say arbitrarily, nor do I want to say capriciously, but you can make a decision that will radically reduce the investments and the reimbursement that you give to a drug without impacting research and development. And the general belief that we've heard when we've had these discussions on the Hill is, well, we can cut pricing by 50, 60 percent, and it's going to force the companies to only focus on Alzheimer's disease, to only focus on Parkinson's disease when the statistics would dictate it's going to be, have the exact opposite impact. They will run away from those to things that will actually give a better return on investment. So you're going to lose investment in these hard to treat diseases because the risk reward is completely out of whack at that point. Um, in investing, you call it the cleanest dirty shirt in the hamper. It's a fallacy where at a certain point, you know, you're always going to take the cleanest dirty shirt. And I think there's a belief that you can always make the shirt dirtier and dirtier, but eventually you, you don't go to the hamper and you buy new clothes. And investors are just going to stop investing in this class of therapy and they'll start investing in apps. They'll start investing in technology. They'll start investing in energy platforms, maybe nuclear power. You know, the fact is you can pollute the market so badly that investors will just leave. They don't have to invest in biotech. 
And this fallacy that you're always going to be able to impact pricing without impacting market access is uh, absurd. We've seen, we did a very large study last year where we looked at the pricing differentials between the US and Europe. And we showed, for example, for every 10% difference in price between Europe and the United States, you add one month in the delay of access uh, between the markets. So there's huge impacts for this and unintended consequences that people don't understand. So yes, it will absolutely have a detrimental impact on so, our so, so so that was a that's a very interesting uh, uh, sort of formula that you just uh, described there. So how much longer will we have to wait for a cure uh, due to this uh, decision that will severely limit coverage right now? How much longer do you think uh, we have to wait for a cure for Alzheimer's? Well, the optimistic answer in the short term is I think a lot of the players who have had phase three products that they could register are sort of sitting on the sidelines hoping this goes away. We'll get okay, more assets. Okay, Mr. Smucker. <laughs> yeah. Just quickly, yeah. the reality, if I could just uh, represent Miller quickly. Um, ultimately, though, if this stays, the return, if the return on investment goes away, no one's going to go there. You know, they will leave that sector. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.